let's invite Paulo on now and we'll talk about George Soros and we'll go to some questions afterwards. Paulo, good to see you. Good to see you as well, Joshua. Hey, Thanks Paulo, for having how, me. How do I say your last name? I keep I think I kept saying it wrong. It's impossible. It's it's <laughs> Figueiredo. It's uh, very hard. It's a <laughs> it's a Portuguese last name. It's Figueiredo. It's it's hard. The R is the most difficult part, but no one Figueiredo, gets it. Right. Figueiredo. Figueiredo. That's it. good enough. Good enough. All right. <laughs> I'll still settle with that. Paulo, it's good to finally have you on. I've been no wanting to have you on the show for a long time now. It's my pleasure. You know, I, I like your work very much. We all we're always uh, meeting each other in conventions and shows and like that. And I never had the chance to be here. So thanks for having me. Yeah, pleasure. You know, everyone's talking about George Soros buying up Spanish language media. What do you know about this? I mean, is I've heard he's buying up conservative anti-communist radio stations. I mean, how how many how many is he bought up, and what's actually happening with this? It's nuts, right? I think they're the. You know what? What impresses me the most with George Soros and um, and the Open Society and all the his investments is how sensitive, and 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 I mean in a good way, how how sensitive he is to the right political issues. So when he noticed the power was was shifting from uh, elected officials to well to traditional leg legislative and uh, executive branch to the judicial uh, system he started to put money uh, to uh, elect prosecutors and, right. and judges and all that and this is this is a very sharp mind and now he's been noticing that the 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 pretty much the left is losing the Hispanic the Latino votes in America. Yep. I don't know if you saw the last YouGov, and YouGov is a pretty left-leaning institute. They always overestimate the votes that the Democratic candidates have. But the, their last poll, the, the same one that uh, that showed that Hispanics, I was, I'm, I'm looking at it right now, and it showed that Trump has 39% of the votes in 2024 right now. Uh, wow. And Biden has 28 among Latinos. <laughs> so that's unheard geez. of. This is geez. like, this yeah. isn't, it's, no one ever thought this was possible. Remember, well, remember Obama had like 80% of the Latino it, vote. Yeah. Exactly. And, <laughs> yeah. and Trump did terribly in his first election when he said he was going to build the wall. And remember, Ann Coulter wrote a whole book about how the strategy of uh, uh, the Democratic Party strategy was to change the demographics in America to make sure Latinos became the majority of the country. And 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 uh, and then since Democrats had 80 percent of the Latino votes, they would win all elections forever. So that's the whole strategy. <laughs> that, that, so, that was that was their strategy. Obama's main advisor on that was, was the guy exactly. who kind of started all that. Yeah. But then they're 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 all desperate because they look latinos okay we have a lot of problems uh we like big government uh we like a lot of uh government um social security programs and, and stuff like that we we like when government distributes money that's that's the problem with all all the countries in latin america okay but certain things latinos don't like in general of course i'm i'm, I'm speaking in general the woke agenda is it's it's just against everything the Latinos believe. First of all, Latinos are in vast majority Christians of some sort, either Catholics or um, Protestants and evangelical. This is which is growing Latin America faster and faster. Brazil used to have, for example, Brazil, the largest country in Latin America. We used to have the majority of the country being Catholics. Now the evangelicals are catching up and becoming the majority, quickly become the majority of the country. So uh, things like let's let's kill babies uh, inside the mom's womb, uh, even if they're nine months old uh, inside the, the womb. It's like it's what? No, uh, let's uh, let's 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 support that your son can become your daughter if he wants and cuts off his pee pee. Come on, yeah. well, uh, you, you don't call yourself Latin X. You know, you're not, you're we, not we don't Latin we Latinx. <laughs> so I don't. I don't even. Know how, oh, so that, that makes I don't even know how to pronounce that. It's, <laughs> This doesn't exist either in Spanish, in Portuguese, or in English. This yeah. is a made up. This is a made up word. So and stuff like that. And people are, and and believe it or not, uh, Obama has been a nightmare 
for legal immigrants. If you're mm. a legal immigrant, the wait time for a green card, for uh, if you married a, 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 a citizen or a green card holder and you want to get a citizenship or the green card, uh, the, the wait time, it jumped from three months to sometimes, depending on, on the visa that you're applying, for years, two years. Uh, the visas for individuals with extraordinary abilities and uh, individuals with uh, uh, special abilities, EB1A, EB2, which which is very relevant. The, the, the wait time jumped from, I don't know, maybe six months to two and a half years. So for the, the 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 wait time for a work authorization, if you're coming here legally or illegally, jumped from three months to a year and a half. So it's and these are the people that supposedly uh, will vote one day. Mm-hmm. So the the people that come from the uh, illegally through the border, theoretically, they were not supposed to be voting ever. Okay, unless they marry someone or whatever, let's not, not get into that. But the people that, that, that are doing the right thing and st- trying to stay in this country legally, they're suffering enormously under Biden administration. I see. So, you know, you know so, something I found very interesting. It's, it seems like there's almost like a like an information war trying where the Democrats seem like they're trying to win back the Latino population. Because, you know, when, when I first saw the reports about George Soros buying up these Spanish language media, I think especially in Florida where you're at. Yes. Um, when I first saw this article, the first thing that came to my mind was when they started up this disinformation governance board, the thing that everyone's called the Ministry of Truth. Right. Uh, the, the first stated object, objective they said of that was to target Spanish language disinformation. Yes. And when I saw George Soros trying to buy up Spanish language media, I'm like, wow, they're afraid something is happening with this. I mean, in my in my opinion, that they're afraid something's happening with the Spanish community that's probably you know threatening their hold on power. And you know, I'm I'm curious, what do you, what are your perspectives on that? Do you do you kind of see the writing on the wall of like an information war, like a narrative war happening over this? So this is what happened. Two um, two. They call themselves entrepreneurs. Um, Jess Morales uh, Roquero and Stephanie Valencia, uh, they have raised $80 million to launch a new Hispanic media company called Latino Media Network. Okay. And this had direct funding from George Soros. They raised $80 million. So I, I was. I don't know if a lot of people did that, but I was looking up who these people, the so-called entrepreneurs are. And if you, Jess Morales Roquero is, uh, she's, uh, she's part of the Ash Center on Harvard Kennedy schools. So, okay. And you, you, you see her, um, her curriculum is, uh, she's look, 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 look at who she is. I'm, I'm, I'm reading my notes here. She's the chair of the families belong together the campaign to end family separation and we belong together nw ndwa's feminist campaign for immigration <laughs> reform what is a feminist campaign for immigration reform i don't even know what that is because they have to put the word feminist in in everything yeah, yeah, yeah. so <laughs> the people stuff start uh, not making sense anymore she's an alumna of hillary for america the AFL CIO Obama for America, the national, the, the Democratic National Committee, rebuild the dream and the new organization organizing institute. Uh, so she's pretty much a political activist for the Democratic Party, and she doesn't hide it. So Stephanie Valencia, on the other hand, she is uh, she, uh, she is uh, she served as advisor for President Barack Obama, uh, senior roles through his presidential campaigns and both terms in office. She served, and I'm reading the curriculum that she has on Georgetown. This one is from Georgetown. She served as an aide to the president at the White House, um, deputy chief of the U.S. Secretary of Commerce, uh, and deputy Latino vote director in the 2008 campaign. So we're talking Mm -hmm. about people that are knowledgeable and in latino activism so they're not entrepreneurs this is not a entrepreneurs they create companies they see business opportunities and they uh try to uh associate uh, uh factors of production as we say in economy uh, and and to create wealth 
So they try to make profit. They try to innovate. This is not about that. This is just a political m propaganda machine. That's that's it. This is George Soros' money to try to win back through propaganda the Latino votes because, yeah. and that shows how desperate they are. That that shows that what we're seeing on YouGov and, and multiple other polls is true that they completely lost the Latino vote. You know, you know, Paulo, I've, I've been hearing about some of the changes happening in Latin America in general. It seems like there's almost like a like a conservative shift taking place. You know, you know, it, that was the 90s. They had the pink wave where a lot of socialist governments took over most of Latin America. And it seems almost like that kind of flipped to the other side. Um, I'm curious. Well, first of all, have you seen this personally? And also, do you kind of see a correlation between you, you mentioned people turning against the woke, the wokest kind of extreme movement, and that's kind of causing the shift as you see in the U.S. Do you see there also being kind of an all of Latin America shift related to that, or how do you see this? It's funny because the the left in Latin America, it's 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 funny to observe because. Um, I'm every day on, on, on TV, on the news, comedy, uh, everyday news, uh, and Brazil is under uh, an election process right now, and everyone's worried because if you look at it right now, the left took over not the whole Latin America, but the Americas. So North America, Canada is all <laughs> as uh, socialist as North Korea right now, uh, the U.S. <laughs> is... <laughs> Is shifting. They, they, they're starting to seem a little more uh, a little more conservative than we are at this point. <laughs> well, they are. It's a, so things are so bad in America. <laughs> I remember, I left Brazil. I left Brazil uh, because I was running away from Dilma Rousseff the, when she got reelected. The, the, she was uh, from the Workers Party. She yeah, ended Dilma up being was like full on communist. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. But and and then we have U.S., which we all know how it is. We have Mexico, very leftist. And yesterday yeah. or this week, Colombia elected their first leftist, real leftist president. They they got Chile. They got uh, they got. Of course, they got Argentina. And Argentina right now, the uh, more than half of the Argentinian population are now starving, literally, officially. Uh, yeah. Inflation over there is over sixty percent. Well, they have Venezuela, of course. So they, they right now, the only countries that are not completely leftist in Latin America are Brazil, which is under election this year. Uh, and and if you believe in the polls, we don't, uh, not completely. But uh, President Lula, former President Lula, the former, uh, he was convicted for corruption multiple times. And also He's very, very, very far left. Yeah, very far left. He's ahead of in the polls. The and and other than Brazil, you have Uruguay, Paraguay, and Ecuador. All all other all the rest are completely red. But the way that the left candidates they struggle a little bit because they try to follow the international U.S., Canada, uh, uh, Europe woke uh, new Green Deal, whatever, and Greta Thunberg. And, and and LGBT uh, X Y Z agenda, and and they they try to to follow that a little bit, but that doesn't go well in our countries. So, for example, uh, in Brazil, Lula tried Lula tried to say that abortion was a matter of uh, public health, and abortion is illegal in Brazil, completely illegal, unless you you've been raped or you have. Uh, um, I don't know the name in English, but you're, the baby doesn't have a, a brain. So in these cases, you can get an abortion, but these are the only cases. And he said it was a matter of public health and that and the the backlash was so big in, in, in the country that he had to say, well, I didn't really mean it. So every time he supports a little bit of a woke, for example, he said that police officers were not, were not human beings. In a sense, <laughs> in Brazil, and that's that's like a step over defund the police, uh, but it's the same. It's it's the same. It's the same ideology, and the backlash because Brazilians like their police, of course, like Americans, we like the police. It's, we call the police when we have a problem, mostly, and and the backlash was horrible as well. So what happens is is that in Latin America, they they have to adapt the the theory. That is 
like universal now in in all the 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 academia, the media, and all that. Everything that they love, the woke, mm. uh, environmental crazy, defund the police, and everything like racial division. They try to adapt that to the reality in Latin America. It's very weird to say like uh, Black Lives Matter in Brazil because we didn't have segregation in Brazil. It's, it's very weird to say that in other Latin American countries as well, because we're, we're, we're all so mixed. That's right. So, I've, I've heard the identity politics. They, they've been trying to bring it to Latin America as well. And you guys didn't have that before, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, you, well, even the it, translation yeah. is weird because yeah. uh, you say even in, 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 in Spanish and Portuguese, vidas negras importam means but black lives matter literally translated, but it sounds weird. So it, it's directly imported. But it doesn't fit well. So the to be elected, the leftist leaders they have to resort to traditional uh, populists. The traditional left in, in it's funny to say that because now the conservatives are the populists. But traditionally in that in Latin America, the left was a populist. And they have to appeal to more populist right. policies. That, that was back like the old old school Clinton era type. So when when, exactly. when they actually I think captured more of the you know actually they probably captured more minority votes during that time actually. Exactly. Yeah. You know, uh, Paul. I guess just last question. You know, in terms of this new shift, it, where you mentioned there is kind of an awakening. So I mean, it, it seems there's two sides of it. Throughout most of Latin America, it seems there was kind of like a new communist wave coming. I know the president who just got elected in Mexico. He's he's a full blown communist. Like not even not even like socialist. The guy's a full blown communist. Um, some of them are really far left. A, a lot of Americans might. You know, I think we generally suspect a lot of them might be voter fraud getting them in. I don't know if people are actually really legitimately wanting these people. Um, the other thing we're looking at though is you know in the U.S. you said that a lot of uh, Latinos in America. Uh, they do seem to be leaning more towards Trump. And you showed us, you told us the polls on these. And now we know Soros, the Disinformation Governance Board, they're trying to target the, this community in America. What do you think people should know about this? Like, you know, I guess you have your finger on the pulse. I know you're more like Brazilian media, but I assume you, you I know you follow a lot of the Spanish stuff too. Uh, what do you want, what do you think people should know about this in terms of just having your finger on the pulse with this? Well, the, the thing they should know is that most of the, well, first of all, America should know that most of the policies from the economic side that that have been, that the, the, the Democratic Party is trying now in America, we've tried that in Latin America for several yeah. years, several times. And the result is catastrophic, 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 sorry. Uh, it's, it's a disaster. Like I said, Argentina, it was a rich country and the left destroyed it very fast venezuela also rich country the left destroyed very fast the chile chile always had since pinochet chile always had they, they had bachelet well bachelet was like a social democrat left leaning yes but now they're going more to the left and the country is experiencing problems that it never had before like inflation which is exactly what the U.S. is experiencing uh, right now. So the thing that people need to know is that, yeah, America is fantastic. This is the great greatest country in the world. We all love America. And sometimes it may look like America is indestructible. It is not, okay? It, it takes centuries to build a country, to build a society as great as ours here in America. But it takes just a few years to destroy it. So... Mm. What we need to know is it's it, we shouldn't be trying the same failed policies that we tried back home here. We should be we, sh we should learn American history, learn how uh, why this country is better. And I'm not afraid to say this. America is better than the rest of the countries in America and in the world, to be honest. America is better. It's exceptional. And we need to learn why America is exceptional. And we, we should be doing more of that and not the repeating the same policies that destroyed our countries and made us leave to, to try a better life here. Hmm. Hey, Paulo, real pleasure having you on. Thanks for your insights as well. I do, I do get you on again sometime. I know it's a 
I feel like we could talk for a lot longer than this, but uh, <laughs> next uh, time, real pleasure having you on. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you.